Hey, welcome to the Expectant Knitter Podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. On Ravelry, you can find a group for this call, for this podcast called um, Expectant Knitter Podcast Group. And all show notes can be found at www.expectantknitter.blogspot.com. <sighs> there, I got all the boring stuff out of the way. So, this is week 27. To share the name or not to share the name? Hmm. This is a chronicle of my adventures in knitting and pregnancy, and it's 27 because I am 27 weeks pregnant. So, let's jump in and talk about... No, wait, I have a story. So this morning, I was driving into work, and the building I work in is sort of... It's just off the interstate, but they, it's in an industrial park where there are... Um, a couple ponds on both sides of the parking lot and then there's the big building in the middle um, and so as I was driving in this morning I saw six Canadian geese and I was like oh look they're by the water that's so cute and then I did a double take because it was like well what are those little brown fuzzy things around them and then I realized each of the Canadian geese they were like in pairs and each pair had four or five little baby Canadian geese. They were so cute. They're solid brown and they're all walking around picking at the grass. I had to stop and watch and of course one of my co-workers was following me and he was just laughing at me the whole rest of the day. Like who else but Stephanie would stop and be like baby geese but they were so cute and I'd never seen them before. Have you ever seen them? Okay, um, let's get on with the show. So, what's going on in my knitting world? Well, first up, um, the Multnomah I have been working on in 3U's Twisted and Fiber, the colorway Diagon Alley. Um, please withhold, I must consult the show notes. Uh, knitting it on size 3's, which is a no, 3.25 millimeter needle. Um, I finished it this weekend. I used about every last ounce of every last milli ounce. I don't know what you would call it, but the skein of yarn I had left after binding off was about this big. <laughs> so I'm really pleased with how it came out. Sorry, I can't show it to you. It's blocking. I don't plan well for this. It's like knit, 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 quick, go block it, and it's still not dry. So I will show you a picture. There you go. That's how it looks while it's blocking. Um, I was really disappointed when I held up the finished pre-blocked shawl at how shallow, you know, from the from the point, it's a triangle, so from the point of the triangle to the, the base of the triangle, how short that was. But now that I've pinned it out and I made sure not to stretch out the garter stitch portion, for some reason I didn't want to stretch that. Um, just the feather and fan part spreading that out. Once I've stretched that, it probably doubled in size. It's much, much bigger than pre-blocking. So I will be very happy to have that. And I made it so that the base is like the U shape. Well, you saw it. So there you go. And that color is gorgeous. The yarn is wonderful to work with. I was really surprised as I was knitting, a lot of purple was coming off on my fingers to the point where um, I had some people comment like, is that good for your your skin, for the baby? Like, that's going into you. And so I tried to limit myself and then I got near the end, like to an hour a day. And then I got near the end and I was like, ah, screw it. I'm just going to blow through this thing. I'm sure it's fine. So I expected that when I soaked it that, you know, a lot of the purple dye would run out. Water, clear, clear, clear. Nothing in the water. So I don't know, maybe there was some kind of chemical reaction between the dye and my skin. That it wanted to just glom onto me, but um, it's all gone now. I keep looking at my fingertips as if it's there. No, <laughs> no dye on my fingertips. So I finished that over Memorial Day weekend. Happy Memorial Day to you. A little late, but whatever. Um, yeah, so Multnuma, done, check. On to the next shop. Um, I have also <clears throat> been working on my um, Blind Venus socks with the opal. And I so wanted to have these done to show you. 
but I'm not. So I'll have a finished sock to show you next week for sure. But as of right now, so this is sock two. Ah, and yarn everywhere. So here's sock one and sock two. And they're close. They're very close to being finished. I have another, what, four inches, three and a half to go. So I just need to focus, focus, bang that out because I bought a little more yarn this week. What a surprise. No, that's not why. Because, <laughs> because I'm tired of looking at these and I want to move on to something that doesn't look like these. So, not that it's not a pretty rainbow color, it's just not what I feel like working on. And this is knit on 1.5 US 2.5 millimeter needles. And it's in my Petaloop loop trying bag. I'm sorry, bag. Anyways, you've seen it before. Um, <clears throat> I know, last week I talked about the Providence cardigan that I wanted to finish it for the cardigan contest. It was 88, 90 degrees. I did not feel like knitting stockinette worsted weight yarn. Lace one. That's all I can say. So, hopefully that baby sweater will get finished, but it did not get finished to go along with a cardigan contest, Cal. So, but I did cast something else on. <laughs> um, last week I talked about wanting to knit the Claudia hat by MJ Kim. It's a worsted weight hat. Um with spirals. It kind of reminds me of a cool house but with ribbing on the top so you don't have to do the cabling all the way around and I'm just looking at the pictures in the pattern and none of them really show how great this hat is. Maybe that one will give you an idea. Um, yeah, so I saw someone else knitting it and I was like, oh, I want to knit that for all the men in my life and give everybody one for Christmas and I bought some um, solid green worsted weight yarn and I dug in the stash and I had some of the um, Divine Zenith that I bought for baby sweater but then changed my mind and thought dark gray, charcoal gray, that's a great color. I cast it on. I am on row 13 right now and perhaps there was a reason why this yarn was so cheap at Webs. Remember I was really excited, oh four bucks a ball and it's discountable. Um, I've run into two in this small amount of knitting two frays in the yarn where it just split as I was working with it. So I'm going to have some ends to weave in. I'm okay with that because I know that this is a really nice yarn and I love it, but maybe that's why it was so cheap. Anyway, um, so this pattern, yeah, I, it's a two, st one stitch, two stitch cable, one stitch over another. So I guess that's technically two stitches involved in each cable. Super simple, right? What is my malfunction? I don't know, but I don't like doing this at all. I think I'm so used to when I knit socks, um, when there's a cable, I can usually do it on the needle. You know, it's like the, the whatever's coming this way is coming forward all the time. Or maybe I just always, I don't know. But um, so it's like a row of, of cabling, a row of knit two, purl two. And I am forcing myself, since I cast it on, to do two rows a day. One annoying row and one easy row. Because I know that I'm eventually going to get to the point where it's just ribbing for the top half of the hat. And this is a Christmas gift for the hubby. And so I'm knitting it when he's not around. And hoping it'll come out nice. And then I realized the other day, so I had thought I would knit three of these. That was my goal. Now I know I'm only going to knit one, and since it's so much work, he should probably be the, the male in my life that gets it. But I realized I've knit him two hats? Oh yeah, just two. Okay, not bad, not bad. One of them's gray, and I was thinking I had knit him three gray hats, but one of those three was actually for his brother, so he only has one gray hat, and it's the um, Fake Isle by... I want to say that was by Amy Boogie. I don't know. It was really, it was, it went viral probably in like 2006. And I knit him one in its stripes and it's very pretty, but it is mainly gray, gray and black. So he will have another gray hat, but that's okay. He'll still like it. 
So this is knit on, um, I'm using fives, which are 3.75 millimeter needles through the cable portion. And then once you get up into the ribbing, you drop down. You're supposed to drop down two needle sizes. I'm only going to drop to a four because I think the pattern calls for a six and a four. And I didn't have a six, so I, and I knit loose anyway, so I did a five and then I'll do a four. It's my plan. I don't want to go all the way down to a three. That'll take forever. Actually, it's the same number of stitches. It probably won't take forever, but whatever. Um, yeah. So I need to come up with, because I still do like the idea of knitting a couple Christmas gifts for other men in my life, the family, whatever. Um, so I need to find a less painful hat pattern that I can do for that. So that is where that is. New project. Probably be done by next week. We'll see. We'll see. Gotta get out of this ribbing section. I think I have, not ribbing, the cable section. I think I have like four more rows of that to go. So. Ah, my bag, my water attacked my forehead. And this is a Delic U bag. I got this at um, the Rhinebeck Ravelry after party, whatever. Um, it was part of the door prize, I want to say, in 2009 or 2008. Maybe it was 2008. Anyways, I like it because you can see what's in it, and it's really lightweight. So, see? There's my paper. Anyways, there's that. Um, and then you say to yourself, Stephanie, what else did you knit this weekend? Because that's not nearly enough for a holiday weekend. I will tell you. I will show you. Um, the <laughs> Wendy Johnson Mystery Summer Charlotte continues. You've seen it on every single podcast. <laughs> it's funny how something's popular so everyone wants to do it. And then the more podcasts I watch, seeing other people talk about it, I'm like, oh dear God, do I have to talk about mine? Because everyone has seen everyone else's. So mine's all closed up. I don't want to ruin it for you. But there you go. That's how far I am. How much I have done. I am about halfway through the third through chart C. So I've done the first three clues. I'm on the fourth. It is going really, really well. I love this yarn. I love this pattern. I think it will make for a great privacy drape. We'll see how big it blocks out to, but that is the point of knitting a lot of shawls lately. Um, so this is Caper Sock, which is a merino cashmere nylon blend. Uh, da -da -da -da. Knit on size fives, which is a 3.75 millimeter uh, string theory Caper Sock, because you know I love it. And the color weight is scarlet. Um, wasn't really sure about posting photos. So what's the etiquette? Do you know what the etiquette is when you're doing a mystery knit along? I know that there's like the, um, the group, the forum etiquette of, you know, don't post pictures in the discussion part, post pictures in the spoiler part. But what about on your project page? Like I had started out with the question mark image that Wendy posted for everyone to use. And as I was going along, I always take pictures of my work in progress. And so I was posting them, but leaving that question mark picture on the front. Is that what you're supposed to do? I don't know, because then I clicked on the project and I clicked, no, clicked on the pattern and then I clicked on the projects tab and the first, whatever, 10 that came up, there were some finished ones. I don't know if they test knitted or what, but it's like, ah, I didn't mean to see all that. I wasn't sure what the etiquette was. And, stupid me for clicking next time I'll know better but just or maybe that's what everybody does you just once it starts you put up all your pictures I don't know what do you think share tell me set me straight I haven't done a lot of mystery knit along but I'm really enjoying it and the group um it gives you a lot of motivation to keep going just you know catch up keep stay on track keep going keep going keep going so the next clue comes out tomorrow night there is a hockey game on tonight, which I fully intend to stay up entirely too late watching. So perhaps I will be able to focus on this. Perhaps I won't. I don't know. 
don't know. I, I do pretty well with hockey just because the announcer's voices, they go up, they get so excited, and oh, they score. So, you know, you know when it's important to look up. So, anyways, that's, that's where this is. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. can't wait to wear it. See, look, look. It's already so pretty. Why am I whispering? I don't know. Okay. So there you go. That's the Summer Mystery Shawlette by Wendy Johnson. And last but not least, oh, and this is my, I talked about it last week, Redog, Redog bag. She's got an Etsy shop. You can find it there. Um, last but not least, my, <sighs> I am like three rows from casting off this sock and I could have been showing you a finished sock. I, my socks are just lingering because I've been so obsessed with shawl knitting, but I will get back to them. I will. And I do want to knit something out of that box of socks. Oh, and there's a new mystery knit along. Ooh. Yarnissima? Yarnissima is, I'll link it in the um, show notes, is doing a lace but not too much lace toe up um, mystery sock knit along which I've looked and admired her patterns for a very long time it's in the um, semi no it's in the solid socks Ravelry group like this is their monthly project that they do I'm a member of the group but I don't think I've knit anything in two years that they've done for their mystery socks I did one well I did up to the ankle on two because I was doing it two at a time because I was so excited and then I frogged them. But anyways, that's not what we're talking about right now. Focus. Um, this is just a 4x4 four four rib. This is the Regia Arabescu um, color 05900. Knit on size 1.5, 2.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. And it's, yeah, it's just a quick, simple sock. So I'm going to bind off so that I finish right about with this color sequence, which matches up with what the toe was, and start the next one. So it's going well. Yeah. Want to see it closer? Okay. Here you go. You can see a little better on the bottom. The color sequence. So I like it. I like stripy socks. I can't help it. I have quite a few, but someday I won't people want to whatever to knit them and I will have socks for life at least that's the theory so that's everything that's currently on my needles why don't we move on to wait there's a pattern here oh square petal loop bag box bag I like it it's green somewhere okay I'm not going to talk about bags anymore enough about bags Come on, it's all about knitting it's not about bags um, so let's move on to the cardigan contest. Yay! Thank you all for participating. There are so many cute sweaters out there. If you click on E K C C K 2011, you could see the 26 finished sweaters out there. 26! I'm thrilled. I had no idea so many baby sweaters would get in it. Um, I need to look at my notes. So, there are a couple interesting facts I want to share with you before I get into pulling the winners, which I'm sure you'd rather hear that, but I want to share this. So, we knit 26 sweaters in six weeks' time. Um, there were two sweaters, that, two sweater patterns out of the five that were eligible for this that were far and away the most popular. 54% of the sweaters were the Seamless Yoke Baby sweater, and 38% were the Green Zebra Baby cardigan sweater, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, can you tell I'm, a, I'm an analyst for a living? I love looking at data. Uh, <laughs> and Jeffner77, she knit the most. She knit three in six weeks. Congratulations, everybody. I hope you are very happy with your resulting sweaters. And now, um, oh, and the other thing I really like looking at was what everybody, sorry, I'm teeth. What everybody used for yarn. It gave me some great ideas of what other people, because I know what I consider to be baby friendly, you know, super wash or super wash. Um, but other people use some things I never would have thought of that, oh yeah, hey, that's a good yarn. That would be a great one for a baby sweater. So thank you all for sharing. I really appreciate it. Okay, and now on to pulling the names. So in here, can you see? 
I have, we're going old school because, I don't know, everybody does random number generators and I thought it would be more fun to pull names. Drama. Oh, sorry. Whoever you are, you're going back in. All right. So here are everyone who, every completed sweater is in here. So like Jeffner77 has three entries in here and we have four prizes. So I'm going to pull for each prize and... Um, the winner, if you can send me a PM in Ravelry with your address, I will get these in the mail to you by the weekend, hopefully, as soon as possible. How about that? Um, so yeah, here we go. I just want to keep track of what is pulled for what. So this is Socks That Rock. Ooh, I don't know the color name. I didn't write it down. It's a Millen. It is 380 yards of 100% superwash merino medium weight. It is a gorgeous um, gray, lime, navy color. So, and all the colors, shades in between. It's really nice. I got it at Rhine back one year. So, first up, all right. Playing a name, drop more, please. All right, should I not look? I should not look up. I want to do it right. Okay, here's one. This one. Okay. So the winner is Alyssa Eng for her seamless yoked baby sweater, which she knit with Knit Pick Swish Worsted. So, Alyssa, send me your um, send me your address, and I will shoot this off to you. All right. Next up, we have the. Ellen Cooper's Yarn Sonnet, hand-dyed yarn. This is Zora Socks, 65% Merino Superwash Wool, 35% Bamboo, <laughs> 420 yards, 3 ounces. Recommended needle sizes are 2s and 4s. This is a navy, royal, almost black and blue yarn. So there you go. This is the next skein. What's up? Okay, I am going to pull, I'm not going to look, la la la, la la la, oh, okay, this one, it is, oh, I ripped it, I'm so excited, ask for seconds, green baby sweater in split, Spud and Chloe sweater, I think she just finished this because I was reading her comments on it, she was not a fan of the Spud and Chloe sweater for a baby sweater. Um, that's, if you recall, that's what I used to knit the, uh, sprout blanket, and I really liked it for a blanket because it felt like cotton, and she did not like it for a sweater because it felt like cotton, so it's kind of funny. Different strokes for different folks, right? So, congratulations, Ask for Seconds, here is your yarn. Next up, 3 used Twisted in Fiber. This is Christmas Blues which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. You'll look great in striped sock yarn. 440 yards. Whew. You could knit a Multnomah out of this. <laughs> or a lovely pair of striping socks. So, let's see. Who could it be? Who could it be now? Wish you guys could see Linus. He's sitting in with the yarn. Okay, here we go. It is, <clears throat> okay, every time I see her name, I think Little Mermaid. That is not what her username is, or Ravelry name is, but that's what I think. El Mermaid. <laughs> For her seamless yoked baby sweater knit in Karen Simply Soft. So you, my dear, are winning this. Send me your address, and I will send it to you. And that fell on the floor. And last, but certainly not least, String Theory Caper Sock. Woo! This is a 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 4 ounce, 400 yards. Um, the color is Labradite. It is, man, I am not loving the teal yarns here today, or blue teal, whatever. It is, I would say, shades of teal and green in with almost
almost to purple and gray, but it's very muted, like nothing like the Malt Mama. So here is this skein of yarn. And the last winner is here. A uh, cabaret kitty for her seamless yoke baby sweater knit of the Sweet Georgia Super Merino Handspun. I believe that is the one that looks like a watermelon. I think it's really cool. Like that was one of the yarns that I never would have thought of. It's a super wash merino, it's handspun. Handspun I think is of as precious, but a couple people knit handspun. And why not? Because a baby's precious. So this is coming to you. And thank you all for participating. Really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to do another knit along. Not sure um, if what you guys would like to do. I'm a big fan of knit alongs and it's funny because you know I think you get down to the 11th hour and everyone is just like banging it up, banging out the project super fast and it's great to watch. So baby socks, shawls, I don't know. What do you feel like? Let me know. Let's talk about it. And I think that's it for the knitting portion of today. So moving on to expectations. Week 27. All right, I realized that last week I told everyone that they should eat walnuts. I don't think I said why. <laughs> so starting week 26, 27, the development of brain tissue goes into overdrive, whatever. That's what the body's working on for the baby right now. And omega-3s help with um, developing brain tissue. It's thought to make the baby smarter. So I'm eating my quarter cup of walnuts a day to make sure I get my omega-3. So there's a little more explanation for me, from me, for you. <laughs> this past weekend, um, we Mom and I went and we bought the baby furniture. So we got an amazing deal at Babies R Us. They, uh, they had a little advertising glitch and so we got multiple deals on top of each. We got actually three deals on top of each other. And I think, well, I ended up buying the, um, a long dresser, a tall dresser, and the crib, which is a um, lifestyle crib, so it converts to a toddler bed and then a the headboard for a full and a or for a full size bed, head and footboard for a full size bed, um, because I've, I got a package for doing that. And I went in there saying I'm buying the most expensive crib and getting the dressers elsewhere. After we looked elsewhere, no, it didn't make sense. So I got the nice package set, all the same, and I saved because that's how you're supposed to. Buy. I saved $800, so I was really psyched about that, like, we're talking about getting a bob, and those things are, bob stroller, those are far from inexpensive, and so, I have money to buy a bob, I guess, is that kind of how I'm thinking about it, but, um, really excited to have that ordered, they're gonna, they're, it'll be here in a week to two weeks or something, so, Got to get them into the house, and then we are good to go. I've ordered a couple, um, like the crib sets, the bedding. I want to call it like a bedspread, and the bumpers, and the wall decals. A uh, couple sets, like the base part of it, um, to, to see how they look against the wall. One has come in, one has not. So as soon as they're all in, I'm going to share it with you guys and maybe get your weigh in on which color goes better with the walls. So, because... I like opinions. It helps. It really does. And I don't know. I'm not much of a decorator. <laughs> so that's what's going on there. Oh, I did get a funny email this week. So I get the weekly emails from um, Baby Center. I'll put the website in the show notes, babycenter.com or whatever it is, um, about what's going on with development-wise each week. So this week they sent an email about what to drink and what not to drink. Okay, it's week 27. Seriously, the time to be figuring out what you should drink, like alcohol, should not drink like alcohol, and what you should drink like fruit juice, is not week 27. Damage has been done here, people. So I was just laughing at them. It's like, oh, maybe, because I'm sure they're all automated emails, like, oh, she's 27 weeks and two days, send this email, and she's 
29 weeks and 5 days, send that email about what to pack for the hospital. And, you know, because it seems like whenever I think about something within a few days, I'm getting an email about it. Except for this, which just made me laugh. It's like, oh no, you're off cadence here. That should be like, we gate. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that was funny. So, then I started cruising around on the site and got into looking at baby names. And I want to share some information with you. So, what do you think the top 10 names for girls and boys were in 2010? I was shocked. The, uh, I was shocked by the boy names, not so much by the girl names because they're popular and I've heard them. Maybe I know more people that have had girls. I don't know. So, I'm just going to run down the list and so you could go, oh yeah, I know that one, I know that one. Um, top 10 girl names in 2010. They don't have 2011 data published, obviously. Um, <clears throat> number 10, Abigail. Number 9, Addison. Number 8, Madison. I think Madison was number 1 for a really long time. Number 7, Lily. Number 6, Ava. Number 5, Chloe. Chloe was gonna, is definitely on our short list for if we were to have a second daughter. <laughs> not going to be for our first daughter, but I really like that name. And Stupid Yarn Company and the little tag. And she's so cute. And it's just like, oh. Although we did say if we had a little red-headed baby, which could happen. He's got red jeans in him. Um, we have to name her Chloe. But, and I could say that to you because you're knitters and you get it. No one else gets it. <laughs> Anyways. Um, number four. Emma. Which is the name of one of my mother's cats. Sorry. That means it insult you. Um, three, Olivia, which makes me think of SBU. Two, Isabella. That's super popular. Like, I, I, I would have thought that was number one. But number one, Sophia. And I know three Sophie, Sophie Sophias um, right now that are under ten. So, it's kind of funny. Uh, boys' names. Number ten, Liam. I love Liam. And I didn't realize it's short for William. I guess it doesn't have to be if they're listing it, but a lot of times it is. So I think it's a great name. Mm -hmm. um, number nine, Lucas. It's biblical. A lot of the biblical ones. You know, at least with my generation, you find a lot of Matthews and Johnson. And number eight, Caden. I've never even heard of this name. So, I don't know where it's coming from that it's like eighth most popular name. Is it from a movie? Book? Glee? I don't know. I'm not in touch with pop culture enough to know. Um, number seven, Logan. I like that one. Number six, Noah. Number five, Jaden. I love Jaden. Jaden is an awesome name. Um, number four, Ethan. Classic. Number three, Jackson. Do you think that's related to Michael? I don't know. Um, number two, Jacob. I like Jacob. I, I think Jacoby has become like super popular too, or maybe that's just in the Boston area because of our lovely baseball players. Red Sox. <laughs> um, number one, Aiden. I did not see that one coming at all. I don't know a single Aiden, but chances are I will know some. <laughs> So, um, other interesting facts about when people pick the names of their babies. So today's statistics heavy. I don't know what's going on with me. Um, an eighth of pregnant couples, people, pick the names before conception. Okay, we fell in that group. We had one name before conception and we've known it for a very long time. One fifth of people pick the names during the first trimester. We fall in that camp too, that's our other name. <laughs> um, a third, uh, which is the majority, the, a third of people pick names are in the middle of the second trimester, which also happens to coincide with around week 20, which is when um, you have your ultrasound and you find out what you're having, boy or girl, whatever, if you want to know. So that's a very common time. A quarter of people pick names at during the third trimester. And now you're saying to yourself, Stephanie, I can't add up an eighth, a fifth, a quarter, a third. Well, I'll tell you what's left. 
one sixth of people wait until after the baby is born to um, pick out a name. So, you know, the, a lot of people end up going to the hospital with, you know, here are our three names, we're going to look at it and see what it looks like and once we meet it. So, those are the most common times to pick names. But I have more interesting information to tell you about, which is when do people tell the names that they've picked, right? So, my mom is just beside herself that she doesn't know what we're having, boy or girl. And I won't tell her our names because we have our two names and that's it. We have told no one. Okay, told the beautician. But she doesn't know anybody. Mom, don't call the beautician. <laughs> Anyways, um, so <laughs> when do most people tell? Because you know, there are people that say the name before and then <clears throat> people refer to their belly by that name or they'll refer to the belly by the initials or whatever. So um, two thirds of people actually tell during pregnancy, which shocked me. I didn't think it was that common, but I don't know. Yeah, I haven't known a single baby that I knew the name before it was born. No, I didn't. But maybe they don't tell friends. Maybe it's only, you know, like immediate family and since this is our first grandchild in our family maybe brothers and sisters would have told each other I don't know so that leaves another third that wait until after the baby is born um, I found another this is all information that you can find on uh, babycenter.com but uh, another interesting fact is that part of the reason or one of the downsides, I guess, to telling is that you can receive some unhired, uh, to telling ahead of time, is that you can receive some unkind comments about your chosen name, which is part of the reason why we've opted not to tell people, because our names are a little bit odd, unusual, um, and that the most likely culprit is the baby's grandmother. <laughs> I wonder if it said maternal grandmother, because that's the one that would get me. So, anyways, uh, just thought I'd share with you some information about baby names and when to share and what the most popular are and when to pick. So, if you're pregnant and you haven't picked a name yet, don't worry, you're in good company. You could be one of those one-sixths that wait and name it after. So, um, so moving on, what's new with you? Let's see. This week, I went to a yarn shop that is not near me. Um, actually, we were, drove to a large, like, furniture alley, anyways, to go to a bunch of stores. And um, there's a yarn shop down there. And so we stopped in, and they were selling some Lucy Neat Bee videos for 50% off. I'm a sucker. 50% off? Yes, please. So I haven't even opened it yet. It's um, Knitting Gems 2. I don't even know what she talks about, but I've heard really great things from the Knitmore girls about Lucy Neat Bee DVDs, so I am looking forward to checking this out and seeing what I can learn about knitting and purling with either hand, stranded knitting, weaving techniques, colored dominance, steaks for necklines and armholes, and short rows. So, we'll see what I think about it. But anyways, there you go. That's new. Also new, while I was there, I picked up the, and I'm sure you've all seen this, but the summer 2011 knit scene. I'm just going to tell you, there are two sweaters that I absolutely love. Although right now, with uh, the belly being so big and it being 90 degrees and miserable, I cannot imagine a knit sweater, like a summertime, summer weight, short sleeve knit sweater right now, or knitting for myself something that doesn't fit to try on as I go. But I really like these anyway, so I'm going to share them. <laughs> You're probably not going to see me knit them anytime soon, but they're cute. Um, the first one is Sackett's Harbor Pullover by Hannah Fettig. She does some great stuff. You know you've seen it before. I love the way the collar rolls. has that like drapey, unusual construction really pretty. I would never knit it in that color. Did you see it well enough? I hope so. I'm, I'm not so great with that. Um, I would never knit it in that color, but it looks awesome. So, and the fact that it's short sleeve and super low cut, it wouldn't take all that much yarn. So, maybe someday. 
And the other one I really liked was the Radiant Yoke by Wendy Bernard. That name's familiar, I don't know why. And they're just showing a picture of the back of it, but it's really cute. Maybe it's just like that model. I don't know. There's another picture of it in here that, um, hang on one second. It shows the front. Is actually where I saw it. That made me say, ooh, I really like that and want to knit it. So. And I think that's a linen. It's got a great drape to it. So I can see that one happening someday. So that is what's new. Yeah. Um, week 27. Wrapped up. I hope you have a great week and send me your emails if you want. I mean, send me your addresses if you want. And if not, we can do another contest and there'll be more chances to win, I'm sure. So, in the meantime, keep on knitting. Have a great week. Stay cool and take care. Bye.